a lot of people to thank. Uh, first of all, the students of the studio uh, that have been amazing. And I, everyone knows me in the room. I'm Agustina Martinez, senior lecturer in architecture. And I've been here in Belfast for 12 years. And I have been teaching architecture for a bit longer than that. But uh, <coughs> I've always been really interested in streets and the way that streets connect people, the way that architecture serves the streets, the way that streets uh, bring people together and, uh, and help kind of channel a lot of the things that happen in our everyday lives. And they're not just places to kind of walk through or cycle through or, or drive through. So um, that's the frame of all this and the Streets Space project that has been happening for a while. But I would like to thank uh, the Department for Communities for having sustained funding for the studio for the past uh, six years and uh, hi, uh, and for the um, and also to uh, public engagement at Queens that have been supporting it for the last three years and have believed in this kind of strange way of trying to challenge the way the consultation happens and try to bring participation to another level by including people from the communities and in in different levels and in different types of workshops, trying to tie up all those different discourses from residents, community representatives, students, people from practice, people from government. And I think um, it's becoming kind of more complex and clear all the time for me by um, doing all these different ways of participating and trying to think of the built environment and basically trying to make things better for people, to try to make people feel a little bit more comfortable in the places where they live. Despite a lot of things that we cannot control, uh, we cannot control poverty, we cannot control a lot of the things that happen in the city, but we can have some influence in the way that the city is designed. And as architects, we have a responsibility to that. We have a responsibility to the people that live in places, and we can we cannot design ourselves out of the problems, but we can use design to at least deal with them, mitigate them, and, and especially participation. And this is an interesting thing because um, I'm going to go a bit through it with my slides, and I'll show all of you who haven't been involved in the studio um, what we have been doing. So the students have done most of the work, and I think that students learn with each other a lot more than they do from me or from their tutors. Uh, and also learn from the people they work with on the ground a lot more than they do from us teaching them architecture. So it's been 10 years of street space so far, uh, and I'm really proud of the work that everyone has done uh, throughout these last 10 years. Uh, up to now, there's been lots of publications, little publications, maps, books of maps, little books, uh, and that in a way has led to the book that we're launching this evening uh, that Jane and Birgit and I uh, co-edited that was a labor of love really <laughs> and of friendship and uh, there's 700 downloads already in two weeks uh, and we're really proud to know that it's open access and that knowledge should not be something that you pay 10 times for. <laughs> uh, and, and we're really happy to have published with UCL um, that has allowed us to do that, to have a book that will be accessible. And even for the, the hard copies, it's an accessible price that libraries can get, that people can get, that students can get. Uh, so just to go a little bit into what we've been doing, and then I'll go to, towards what we're doing today, uh, we have been, we, we're spending now two years in this area of uh, Donegal Pass and Holy Land on that side. And I'm really happy that we're here in the Accidental Theatre. So thank you to the Accidental Theatre because we're in the hinge of these two areas. Next year, we're going to be doing Sandy Row and the Village. And this is a work of collaboration. I like to think of myself as someone who makes connections and makes people talk to each other. And we have worked throughout the past few years with public engagement, with uh, estates at Queens, with all the cycling campaigns. We have a new Belfast cycling campaign just launched, uh, so you can look at that. 
uh, with Belfast City Council, Department for Communities, PPR, Forward South, particularly throughout the last few years, that has been a really great organization that kind of covers a lot of the people around the area. And uh, so the list is not, it's not I mean, it's, it's more than these, but these are just some of the people we work with. Then, uh, for those who don't know, last year we did the Open Botanic Festival in Botanic Avenue, and uh, some of the students who are here participated very actively on that, working with Lawrence Street workshops in the co-design of kiosks. So the idea was that the festival was not just going to be a place for entertainment, but a place where people could... Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of noise. Uh, but a place where people could... Um, De develop a sense of ownership of the place, of Botanic. Um, and that was done through participate, participatory workshops with residents that designed some wonderful pieces on these four stalls in the in Botanic, um, in Open Botanic Festival. Uh, an orchard, a granny's living room, which was wonderful, uh, where people could come and tell their stories and exchange recipes. Uh, a positivity pit stop with mindfulness activities and the eco gazebo all about planting. Um, and the festival was about entertainment, but it was mostly about giving people the imagination, like just thinking of how people can use their imagination to rethink a space that is normally not valued enough. Uh, and then this year, we work throughout the year on <coughs> the street space in Holy Land and, um, and Donegal Pass, and we looked at housing. These are things that you're going to be discussing today. We looked at the distribution of housing and mixed use across the area. We looked at how the fabric of Donegal Pass completely transformed from a kind of terrace-based, connected, permeable fabric to a cul-de-sac uh, type of fabric where vehicles cannot really go through, but a lot of them can park in there. And there's, there's positives and negatives around there, because you could consider that a low traffic neighborhood, but because cars are allowed to go everywhere, it doesn't really act as a low traffic neighborhood. So that's something that we can discuss today. Um, a large, huge amount of HMOs, for those of you who don't know what HMOs are, they're housing of uh, multiple occupation, and they take over a huge percentage of the land of the Holy Land, and those are uh, occupied mainly by students and some by immigrants, and that also dictates the demographics of the area and who goes to the botanic school and a lot of uh, others of those issues. We looked at the history, a very conflicted history of the area with a lot of uh, troubles related history as well, and uh, a lot of trauma, and a lot of poverty, and, uh, and we started thinking about how we can analyze those things, how things like housing changed from the 1960s until today, uh, how those houses that used to be occupied by families then became occupied by students, how that permeable fabric that was changed by this cul-de-sac didn't really change the type of housing, so the, the amount of space given to living back in the fabric of the, of the end of the 19th century that was there until the 60s and 70s was not really that much smaller than the space given today. The biggest change was in the open space in the back, which is, again, a pub, private space, so not necessarily a space that can be shared by different people. Then we looked at the demographics, and in terms of mobility, we looked at the... Um, at, again, we reinforced what we had found out in our research before, <coughs> that there's a lot more pedestrians than cars, there's uh, cars parking in places where they shouldn't, there's, not, there's a lot of empty uh, car parking spaces, and, uh, and increasingly more cyclists every year. And then um, there's, we started looking at details of those junctions and how badly designed, and how they are designed thinking mainly of the car. I mean, if you just look out this window, for those of you who aren't from Belfast, if you look out the, that window, that is a junction that's designed only for cars. And as a pedestrian, you have to cross about seven times to get from one side of the road to the other. Um, then we also measured cars the way that 
the cars parked in the Holy Lands tend to be mostly cars brought by students who are left there, the cars are left there from Monday to Thursday, and then they disappear in the weekend. So that means that something could be done about the way that students are arriving to the Holy Land, and public transport would be a solution for that. Then something that might interest those of you from Barcelona, we have two of them here today, uh, the way that the junctions are designed here and the way that they are being designed now in Barcelona and how that has completely changed the way people behave on these streets. Uh, we looked at junct the, this junction of Shaftesbury Square and compared it with Paris and how those pedestrian crossings changed the way, I mean, instead of doing seven, you could do two crossings. Instead, so just changing the way, just by looking very much in detail at the design of those spaces, you can make changes that would transform the way people experience them. The public transport that is relatively good, all things considered, during the week, in the weekend it disappears completely. On a Sunday, forget about trying to take a bus on the Irma Road or anywhere from South Belfast or anywhere into the city centre. And then we did something called ethnography that might be new for some of you and very much your everyday life for others. And it's about turning, it's, we call it graphic anthropology, turning things that are part of the history of a place into a drawing or a model that represents them. This is the work by uh, Rees looking at the working area of the gas works and the elements that dominate this, uh, that area now. Uh, Frankie's work on the feminist city and uh, trying to understand the way women experience spaces in this area. Gabby's stories of everyday life on streets turned into a model and a map with quotes from all the interviews she did. Um, Joanna's work on, the, on looking at what happens with all the bins and the little things in the backyards and the front yards of, of housing, sorry. Um, Ian's work looking at walking with women, with children, across Botanic and what those experiences are. Um, and Stuart's work on the connections between different people in the area that are more vi virtual than they are uh, physical. Um, Dylan's work on very specific stories of Britt Roddy and the, the um, cobbler on Botanic Avenue and how those illustrate ways of understanding the streets. So you're going to be able to see this already. It's going to be online very soon. Luisa has been working on the final version of this. We're going to have a GIS. We, it's, it is there. I'm, I can open it for you now. But mainly the, we're doing some very bold, quick moves in our proposal. Uh, the idea is to pedestrianize all of Botanic Avenue and up to the city center to have two corridors of glider going up and down uh, University Road and Victoria Street and Orma Road and uh, Cromack Street, uh, to have a network, a connected network of cycle lanes that are protected and separated from traffic, and I can't say that more in a more defined way. And then projects, for example, like Caitlin's that's going to be regreening all of the spaces between buildings on the cul-de-sacs and the people who are doing public space are going to be discussing that. And then uh, Merens, who's not here today, but of greening and removing traffic from the embankment. I know all these things might sound a little bit idealistic and utopian, but they could be done. And we've consulted with a traffic engineer to, to check whether these things would be plausible, and they are. Uh, and, and then we're also, we've also been thinking of strategies like putting the bins underground, uh, the, the pneumatic bins that we know cost a lot of money, but it could save so much. If we think of the money that council spends on cleaning up the Holy Land, you could use that money to build all the network of bins in this area. Um, and also a series of very strategically placed multi-story car parks that will only cater for people who live in the area and need to park their cars and not for necessarily for commuters who can park in all the other car parks that are around the city. And then, um, and also we were discussing a system of a little, um, a, those vans, and I know they have them in Manchester, where you can have like a constant an electric van that will pick up people that have mobility problems and take them to the bus stop. 
So that would be that would go doing loops around the area. And it's a constant, it's an electric vehicle. It's only for people who have mobility issues. And it solves the problem of discussions we've had with many of the residents that the, the bus was removed from Donegal Pass and now they have to walk a bit longer. For some of them it's no problem, but for some of them is. So there's small things that don't cost a lot of money. You don't have to change the whole infrastructure and you can do to solve some of those problems. So here's a little bit more detail about that and you're going to be able to see a lot more of it. Uh, and then mainly, I think one of the main things is the change of Shaftesbury Square from a completely car dominated fabric to one where we pedestrianize everything. We pedestrianize all of Postnet uh, Street area and uh, all of this is pedestrianized and with trees and then the glider goes up and down just University Road and uh, down Victoria Street. Uh, and that's just one of the images of Botanic Avenue. And then just to mention a bit of the projects, uh, we have uh, Caitlin's project, and you've discussed more of these on your tables. Um, Danny's for elderly people, a, a kind of community center cafe where they can go read the paper. Uh, the Dillus project of the shops on Botanic, Frankie's project with Lawrence Street Workshops, uh, Gabby's project of a textile making place on the, in the church of Donegal Pass, uh, Luisa's uh, dignity for the displaced uh, housing for, um, uh, for people coming out of homelessness, uh, Reese's project of bringing back ornament and beauty to a working class area that sorely needs it, Stewart's project for a flexible building that is on the third um, industrial revolution. Uh, Amelia's project for the everyday, anyone who's going to be in that uh, table should be interested in this. It's a vertical farm with a train station that replaces the current um, Botanic Avenue train station. Um, uh, Dara's project for the reuse of Havelock House that is scheduled for demolition but uh, it would be used for cinema, film, and art studios, which were uses that the building has had before. Elena's uh, project for housing for people with disability problems. Um, uh, Emily's project for the re reuse of the School of Music. Uh, Shreya's housing for people with uh, disabilities and for families. Uh, and Ian's project probably one of the most needed things in the area, a sure start center for the children of Donegal Pass and Holy Land. And um, Joanna's project for a school of dance and housing on Posnet Street. So what are we doing in the future? Uh, we're working on the Open Botanic Festival that will happen on the 24th of September coming this uh, coming summer. Uh, we have an Instagram of the murals that Amelia has been working on and you can get a link to that immediately. The idea of today, this afternoon, is to work with the work that the students have been done and to see how that can be brought forward, whether it's, is there policy that can come out of these things? Are there things that you see outside that complement the work of the students? Can we make a map that shows the things that have been done plus anything that can be discussed in the room today? Uh, and we're going to close with a presentation of each one of the four maps for five minutes at four. And uh, then at 5.30, we're going to move down to the Lanyon building where we'll be launching the Everyday Streets book. And uh, that's, there's going to be a talk by Julian Dobson and uh, Saida Mucci. Uh, and then we'll have cheese and wine <laughs> and go out for dinner.